Welcome back. My name is Darren Thomas and I am the Director of Educational Research Techniques. In this video, we're going to be learning about elastic net, another form of regularization regression using Python. So let's go ahead and see what we can learn. Now with the elastic net, it allows you to have all the strengths of ridge regression and all the strengths of lasso regression working together in one. So what's happening here is you can, with ridge regression, reduce the coefficient all the way down to zero without removing it from the, the model, or, and or you can also have the benefits of lasso regression in which you are able to remove um, variables that have very low or weak coefficients from the model as well. And so, and what makes it even more powerful is that when you set the hyperparameter for this algorithm, it's called the L1 ratio, I believe, you can, it's on a sliding scale. So you can have a mixture of the, com of, of the traits of lasso and ridge regression together within one algorithm so that you can find two things as you see appropriately. So we're gonna have our same three steps here. We're gonna do our data preparation, make a baseline regression model, and then of course make our elastic net model. And we're gonna be using a data set called FAIR, which is kind of trying to predict marital satisfaction using various independent variables. So right here in this first cell, we have all of the various modules and functions we're gonna be using. So in line one, our data comes from this one, PI data set. Uh, lines two and three is NumPy and Pandas respectively. Line four is going to be, of course, using our grid so that we can find the most appropriate value for our L1 ratio and also for our alpha. Then line five is going to be where we're going to be using uh, for elastic net. Line six is for linear regression. And of course, line seven is going to be our metric. And that is, of course, um, for the mean squared error, excuse me. So let's start by preparing our data. So let me go ahead and start pasting the code in for that. So here it is. We're gonna be using, oh, let me run this up here first. All right, here we go. All right, so here's our data set. So there's a couple of problems we have to deal with. We have to, of course, convert child to a, a numeric, a dummy variable, same thing with sex. So there's several things that we have to make adjustments for. And so we're gonna do that right here. So we're gonna paste. So here, all I'm doing is I'm setting up my two dummy variables for gender, or it's called sex in this particular uh, module, or excuse me, in this particular uh, data, data set, data frame, and also for child. So I'm gonna go ahead and press Control Enter, and then we can take a quick look at it again. And now you can see that we have our nice dummy variables here for child and also for sex. So 0101 for male versus female and for child 0011, et cetera, like that. Now what we need to do is we need to set up our independent and dependent value variables or data sets if you will. So what's happening is that for our X values, we're gonna use religious, age, sex, YM, education, occupation, and number of affairs. That's what MB stands for. And then for our dependent variable, it's gonna be rate. In other words, how satisfied they are, they are with their marriage. So we already set that up. And now we're ready to make our baseline model. So I'm not going to go over the details of making the baseline model. We've already talked about that before. So I'm just gonna go ahead and paste this in. And so this is gonna set up our linear regression model with no kind of adjustments to the coefficients using elastic net. We haven't gotten to elastic net yet. And so our metric is gonna be the mean square error. And so you can see right now we start with a 1.04, 1.05, however you wanna see it. And let's take a quick look at the, the coefficients. We'll do a quick um, for loop to go through that to see what they are. And so first thing is we set up our dictionary and then for coefficient feature in the regression model is going to pull it. And so here are, here's the out, output. 
So you can see that most of these values are pretty low. So the, the, the R square is probably not that great. But um, these are the different variables right now when you're just using uh, ordinary least square regression. So religious 0 0.04, age is essentially zero, you know, sex is 0 0.08, all the way through the other ones. Now we're going to deal with uh, elastic net. And so elastic net, we're gonna have two hyperparameters that we need to set. We need to set the L1 ratio, which tells us how much or how less our model is like either ridge or lasso regression. So when, L, when the L1 ratio is set to zero, it's the same as ridge regression. When it's set to one, it's the same as lasso regression. So it takes more and more characteristics of lasso as the values get closer to one. And then our algorithm takes on more and more of the characteristics of ridge regression as the L1 ratio gets closer to zero. That's what's happening here. So you can have like a, a mixture of the two right there. And we also need to set our alpha. Um, and the alpha pr is provided to assign how much weight is given to each of the L1 and L2 penalties. So how much weight is given to the penalty that you're using. That's what the alpha is for. So let me go ahead and show you the code for this. All right, we've done this before in previous videos, but we start by making an instance of elastic net and we normalize the output for that particular uh, argument and call it elastic. Then we set up our search grid using grid search CV. Our estimator is elastic or our estimator is this guy right here. Our, param our parameter guide is gonna be alpha. It's gonna be of uh, eight values between negative five and two. And then our L1 ratio is gonna be one of these four values right here. Then our scoring or the metric we're gonna to use to determine if our uh, value is good is gonna be a mean squared error. The number of jobs has to do with like the processors with your computer, refit is true, and the cross val validation value or the K is gonna be set to 10. So everything is here, press control enter. Nothing happens as you can see, but we're gonna find out in the next, the next cell what's happening here. So here we go. First, we're going to search or we're gonna fit everything to our search here. So we're gonna fit it to this guy right here. And this is our independent variable and this is our dependent variable. Then we're gonna find out, okay, what's the best parameter score? And then what is the, the best, uh, the, I'm sorry, what's the best, uh, most appropriate values for our parameters in, in line two? And what's the best score we can get with these parameters set, hyperparameters, excuse me. So give it a second. And so the best values for our parameters is gonna be 0 0.001 for our alpha and the L ratio is 0 0.8. That's very close to uh, lasso regression if you remember the little rules up here. And if we use that, we can expect a mean square error of about 1.08. So again, it looks like our model is n not doing much better, but this is a cross validated model. That's why the score is a little bit different. So we're getting close to the end here. Now what we do is we take these hyperparameter values and we plug them into our actual model to see how we do. So here we go. Now we're using our elastic, we just reuse the name. So we're using elastic net as our actual, you know, algorithm here. And we're setting the alpha to a specific value now. Okay, 0 0.001, 0 0.75, I could have said 0 .0, 0 0.8, but it's close enough. Elastic.fit, then we actually fit the model, and then we look at the results. Uh, we find the mean square error of elastic, we predict the course with the prediction values, and then we uh, take a look at the output of our second model. So you can see here, now we got 1.05. So remember, this model is not cross-validated. These are the same values essentially that we got for ordinary least square regression. So it appears to be no difference. But there is one more thing that we can take a look at. And that is going to be the actual coefficients. So we're going to put this here, but I'll, I'll move it up to the top so we can compare. So the main thing you're going to notice here is that occupation has been set to zero. So it's kind of been removed from the model essentially. But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this up closer to our regression results so that we can compare them. So I'm gonna run this again. And so now you can compare them. So for 
the ordinary least square regression model, you can see we had 0 0.04 as the coefficient weight. It goes down to 0 0.01 for the elastic net model. Age is about the same. Uh, it looks like sex went down a little bit from 0 0.08 to 0 0.01. YM is about the same. Education is about the same. And occupation went from basically being zero to being absolutely removed from the model. And n number of affairs is about the same. They're both a negative relationship. So essentially, even with all this interesting, complicated adjustments to our model, we didn't make much of a difference. But our goal in these videos is not to have an, an amazing algorithm performance here. Our goal really is to show you how to use these algorithms for your own benefit. And of course, we could find ways to tweak this. Maybe search for other values of alpha, search for other values for the L1 ratio, and find ways to adjust and make uh, changes to it, like including other variables or removing variables, whatever. There are ways to improve this that are kind of beyond the scope of the video for the sake of time. So what I will do now is I will summarize what we did and conclude the video. So in this video, we took a look at how to use elastic net regression. Elastic net allows you to have all the strengths of ridge regression with all the strengths of lasso regression by allowing you to adjust a, a, an L1 ratio so that you can capture characteristics from each of these different algorithms, ridge and lasso. And so we began by setting up our baseline, or excuse me, by preparing our data. Then we set up our baseline model with the metric being the mean squared error. And we got about 1.05. We took a look at the coefficients. And then we prepared our elastic net regression. Because we don't know what's the best value of alpha or the L1 ratio, we had to do a grid search where we had the model use different combinations of these hyperparameters to try to determine what was the best one. And so our final result was is that an alpha set to 0.001 and the L1 ratio set to 0.8 will give us the best model. We put those values into our actual elastic net uh, model and we were able to get a performance that was almost identical to our regression output, ordinary least square regression output. A little bit disappointing, but again, our goal is to learn how to use these algorithms. And so when we took a look at the actual coefficients, they were almost identical with the exception that the, the, uh, the uh, elastic net algorithm removed occupation from one of the independent variables in the model. So I hope that this video was useful. You were able to understand what we talked about. My name is Darren Thomas. I am the Director of Educational Research Techniques. Take care.